Service in Raleigh, it's Nick Petro with your routine weekly briefing for Central North Carolina. This briefing covers the 2nd of December this Monday through next weekend, Sunday, November 8th. And um, uh, I would say this uh, this briefing is slightly different than routine. Um, but uh, but anyway, you'll see what I mean here in just a moment. But before I get started, and I'm not going to spend a lot of time on this because there's a lot of weather to talk about, but I want to just remind everybody that this week is uh, North Carolina's Winter Weather Preparedness Week for 2024. And if you go to weather.gov slash Raleigh, you'll see a bunch of headlines on our uh, news headlines at the very top of our page, bunch of them related to winter weather. So first starting with the winter outlook, you can click on that and, and read all about the winter outlook. Um, we've got a, a virtual winter Skywarn training um, that's free and open to the public on the 10th of December. Uh, this second link here, this is Winter Weather Preparedness Week. So this is our winter prep page for Winter Weather Preparedness Week, and it features an abundance of great winter preparedness information. Um, every day there's a different topic. Uh, so yesterday's was the outlook for the winter which as you see here for North Carolina, odds tilt toward above normal temperatures and below normal precipitation. However, short episodes of wintry, cold and unsettled weather in an otherwise warmer and drier season are still possible. So we're going through one of those uh, short episodes that I speak of here. Um, so, uh, so anyway, but there's other topics here. Here's Monday's topics, uh, weather patterns and planning, uh, pre home preparation, winter driving, excessive cold, uh, becoming a winter observer, dangers with ice. And we have uh, info here for deaf and hard of hearing and um, and Spanish language uh, preparedness information. So definitely check that out. Uh, back at the top headlines again, this is a really great webpage. I love it. It's from the North Carolina State Climate Office. Um, this talks about everything winter related. So everything from normal annual snowfall, to large scale winter patterns, just a, an amazing abundance. Uh, there's even links to the Winter Storm Database, just a, a really great page. In fact, uh, North Carolina State Climate Office is located here uh, at the same building that uh, here at National Weather Service Raleigh were located uh, here on NC State Centennial Campus. So our friends downstairs put this great information together. So I highly encourage folks to check that out. All right. so. Um, let's see, where were we here? Back to our uh, slideshow. And the first thing I want to mention is you may have gotten this in your email uh, last evening talking about some light snow chances uh, tonight, this upcoming tonight. So let's uh, jump over to uh, GR Earth here and, and let's uh, put some context to this. <clears throat> and this is live data right now. Uh, so we have an upper level water vapor image. Uh, the radar is below that. So you see this purple and blue, that's all snow. Um, and the temperatures are in the 18s and 20s there. Uh, this little squiggly line right here, that's basically depicting an upper level uh, disturbance. So uh, as sometimes they're referred to as upper level low pressure systems, but basically it's right here where I drew this X, uh, a little kink in the, um, in, in the, in the flow there. Uh, so uh, so that's an upper disturbance. Um, we had an earlier one kind of push through. It's a little bit sort of already to our east, uh, giving us clear weather behind it. That's pretty typical today. Um, so the idea here is um, <clears throat> when this upper level disturbance, which here's the, here's the uh, typical flow in a big trough pattern like this. <laughs> Excuse me, I'm so sorry. I tried to not cough into the microphone there, but my apologies. The big upper trough is centered right here up uh, over the northeast. And there's all these little waves that kind of ripple along it. Here's one, here's one, and there's probably additional ones upstream. Uh, the overall flow is like this around the low, upper low. So uh, suffice it to say, this system right here is going to move to the south and east and cross central North Carolina uh, tonight. So that's the setup for what's going on here. And a couple things, uh, so this is live. Where is this snow gonna go and how is it going to evolve? Well, let me turn off the live data and let me turn on some simulated data and let me turn off the temperatures. And this is a simulation of that live snow that I was just showing you. This is the high resolution rapid refresh um, <clears throat> model. And uh, you could see the snow falling there in Illinois, Southern Indiana 
and this time frame right here is, is uh, 2 p.m. this afternoon, 3 p.m. this afternoon, 4 p.m., 5 p.m., 6 p.m., 7 p.m. this evening, 8 p.m. this evening, 9 p.m. this evening, 10 p.m., 11 p.m., midnight tonight, 1 a.m., 2 a.m., 3 a.m., 4 a.m., 5 a.m., 6 a.m. So what we see, what, what I'm showing there, and uh, let's see, uh, why is that not showing up here? Model fill, oh, that's model overlay. Okay, there it goes. So, so let, me, let me zoom in, let me back up here a couple hours. Uh, let's back up to right about there, right when it crosses the mountains. And let me zoom in and you can see uh, as the disturbance crosses the mountains, and actually let me remove those lines because they're not really helping at this point. Model overlay, there we go. All right, so as, as we can see, this time frame right here is, um, that is 11 p.m. And by 11 p.m., we have some very light, light precipitation. This would be basically, as I remove the coloring, uh, this would be basically snow. Um, because at this point it's coming in at night, so it'll be cold enough for it to be snow. So by by you know 11 p.m. or midnight, we're talking you know the Western Triad, seeing some of these snowflakes, snow flurries, <clears throat> and then as we go to uh, midnight, moving over to Greensboro, uh, by by uh, 1 a.m. we're talking Greensboro down to maybe Albemarle, and then it just slips to the southeast. So so um, that is 2, 2 a.m. tonight, 3 a.m., 4 a.m., 5 a.m. And you can see, look how it falls apart as it's moving to the south and east. So <clears throat> that's 6 a.m. for the morning commute. So for tomorrow morning's commute, there shouldn't be anything falling if this model is correct. And this is a pretty good model. This is our uh, frequently updating high-res rapid refresh. So the morning commute should be okay, but I will point out here that places from you know, the triad down towards, you know, the southern southwest Piedmont, it seems like where, you know, see, the, 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 those seem like the areas that will have this brief, I, I'm, I'm even afraid to call it a band because I wouldn't even call it a band of snow. It's going to be very light. I would describe it more as flurries to light snow at times. So again, one more time. So that is 10 p.m., 11 p.m., midnight. 1 a.m., 2 a.m., 3 a.m., 4 a.m., 5 a.m., 6 a.m., it's dissipated, okay? And, and, and I will point out that most of the models are all showing the same thing. Um, so, so again, areas from, say, the triad, let me get my drawing tool out here. So the, the sort of from the triad down towards, you know, the southern Piedmont, this area here that I drew in is probably the areas that we'll see uh, this this uh, very light precipitation amount. You see how I drew that circle right there? All right, right there and there is probably the areas that will most likely see some of this uh, this light snow, maybe flurries. Now, how's this going to impact you? Well, you, you might see a little tiny dusting on the grass, nothing big, nothing you know, uh, super impactful. The only place I might be concerned about is even if there's flurries or even a light coating could be on bridges. So any bridges in this area here that I have circled, maybe as far back as Charlotte and points west. I Obviously, I could have drew the circle further west, but that's covered by Green, uh, uh, Greenville Spartanburg uh, National Weather Service. So of course, I don't want to cover too much of their territory. But uh, the bottom line is, is if you're in a uh, if there's any bridges or overpasses in this area, uh, there could be a few slick spots. Okay, if you're in the triangle, yeah, you might see a flurry or two, but again, I don't think it'll be anything more than that. You could probably count the number of flurries in the air. If you're up in Rocky Mountain, nothing. Sorry for our friends up in the Northern 995 corridor, you're not going to see any of this. And for our friends down in Fayetteville, if you see one flurry, you might consider yourself lucky. Again, it's our friends from the Triad, Winston-Salem, Greensboro, Lexington, <clears throat> um, Albemarle, uh, you know, uh, Ashboro, uh, Troy, you know, maybe Southern Pines, down toward Wadesboro, 
Rockingham, those areas, okay? So that's that's what we're expecting for that particular for tonight. All right, so let me let me erase this and go back to our um, slides. All right, so you can see this is why we circled this area last night on that uh, on that graphic. And 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 I'm gonna move ahead with the with the briefing, but it, for folks who need to drop off, I totally get it. But if you stick around towards the end, I'm going to highlight. Uh, at the end of this briefing, I'm going to do a little demo of our winter page where you can find additional info about our snow chances, okay? But I'll save that for the end in case any folks need to, uh, you know, uh, don't have the time to stick around. All right, so again, this is really our only weather event this entire week. Other than tonight's low-end snow possibilities, the forecast pattern is dry and generally cold for the rest of the week into the weekend. Maybe maybe early next week, uh, maybe late in the weekend, there could be some chance uh, chances for rain. It will be warm enough for rain. Uh, but but aside, otherwise, uh, it looks cold and dry after tonight, uh, right through the weekend. Okay, so uh, here's a depiction of precip amounts. And again, look there east of Charlotte. There's that little green blip there that represents maybe a light dusting of of snow tonight. But again, very, very subtle, very minor. And then dry Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, five-day total, pretty much nothing but except what falls uh, tonight. All right, no flash flooding concerns, no threat, severe severe weather concerns. Uh, our graphical hazardous, um, you know, it'll be dry today and breezy. Uh, so that's why we have fire weather highlighted for today. And again, on Thursday, dry and breezy. And then pretty chilly tomorrow, tomorrow morning. I mean, it's going to be the coldest day of the, of the week. So... Uh, keep that in mind. All right, what else do we got here? Uh, the 8 to 14 day outlook. So we're talking next week. Uh, looks like maybe a return to another episode of cold. Um, 33 to 40% chance of above normal precipitation. I wouldn't necessarily put those two together and think that there's going to be a winter weather as this thing changes from day to day. All right, let's wrap it up here. Uh, don't forget this week is uh, North Carolina's winter weather preparing this week. Be sure to visit our uh, winter prep page for more details. Uh, we'll have a fast moving weather disturbance that I talked about across central North Carolina tonight, bringing a chance for some flurries or a very brief episode of light snow to portions of central North Carolina, again, south and west of Raleigh. A uh, little snow accumulation. Um, other than tonight's low end snow possibilities, the forecast pattern is dry and cold for the rest of the weekend to the weekend. Maybe late next weekend and early next week, we'll have uh, it'll be warming up and we'll have maybe a rain chance. I want to emphasize again with tonight's light snow ep episode, we can't rule out the possibility that a few bridges could become slick in spots, but this would be where higher snow rates occur and those will be very isolated. And at this time, it's pretty challenging to determine exactly where that will be. But again, the best chance will be south and west of Raleigh. And one last thing I really, really want to emphasize, be cautious of these long range forecast models that are all over the internet, all over social media. You can go and find them yourself online that sometimes they'll show big winter storms happening across our area in the extended period of the forecast, days four through seven and beyond. And, and model predictions in that outlook time frame, particularly this time of year, often experience huge run to run swings and changes. So what a model predicts for days four and beyond uh, in one model run may look completely different the next model run. And, and there was an episode uh, this past weekend on Saturday. If you'd have looked at Saturday's GFS model, the 6C run, it showed a gargantuan snow and ice event over us, over us for next for this weekend. Big storm, lots of ice, lots of snow. And you know, everybody's sitting on the edge of their chair, and then you know, six hours later, the next model run comes in and it's not there. It's gone. There, there's nothing there. I mean, so, you know, sometimes be careful what you see on social media because some folks out there will grab screen captures of these gargantuan snow events, post them online, get everybody all worked up. And then six hours later, the model that that person just showed doesn't show anything. So, uh, so anyway, um, just, just be, be aware of that. Okay. All right. So that wraps up our briefing for central North Carolina. Again, for folks who want to stick around, I'll show you little more uh, tools for that snow event tonight. Uh, but this is it for our briefing.